take a look at this. So we had 3.3 million people file for unemployment last week. Today, I believe this is even accurate. I think it is 6.6 .6 million. So it's almost 10 million people in one, two weeks that are unemployed. Highest in history. Uh, it, it's kind of absolutely amazing. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this along with a few other uh, subjects as well today. Uh, mostly going to be based off of the market and uh, some of the coronavirus stuff that's going on as well. Uh, plus a book that I'm currently reading and uh, two other topics that I, uh, I want to go over. So uh, first and foremost, let's go ahead and take a look at where the S&P 500 is today. Set at 251, uh, kind of bounced off of today that uh, specific level of 243 is right off the open. So uh, it's one of those things that with this market being the way that it is, balls out every day, don't really know which direction it's going. So you have to play it based off of technicals. So um, one of the things that, you know, a lot of people are asking as far as right me right now is, you know, what's a buy? Where, where, where should I buy this? There's, there's so many names that are so cheap. Yeah, there's a lot of names that are cheap, but they can also get a lot cheaper. Um, you know, as far as where I think this market could go, it all depends on these jobless claim numbers and how long and how high unemployment gets. So with unemployment the way that it is and, and the possibility of businesses closing, you know, where does that put us as far as a country in the next six months? Um, at this point, I really don't think we're going to have a V-shaped bottom like everybody says that we're going to. Uh, I think it's going to be more of a slow grind back. The market will, you know, see those numbers and it'll be ahead of everything else as far as the actual economy goes. But, you know, if we do hit 20, 25% unemployment, you know, there's, there's so many unknowns as, as far as to what actually happens in that situation that people are going to be, uh, possibly not in the job that they were when they left. Um, you know, small businesses might not be opening. Some of them might've been struggling up to that point, uh, that the virus came and now they're just going to throw, throw in the towel. So, um, I guess we'll really see. So, um, S and P 500, I, I just see this in the next six months, you know, retesting lows, if not breaking through those lows going through, uh, you know, 2000 on the S and P. I hope it doesn't, but you know, just as somebody who's seen a lot of market action, the breadth and the, the speed of that first initial downdraft, um, just kind of tells me that was the beginning as far as selling goes. Um, kind of want to always take a look back at 2000 and, 8, 2009 because that's the, the only really memory that anybody has as far as how this action could play out. You know, if you, if you just take that first downdraft, um, you know, from the 130s down to the 70 area, you know, that's another 50% move. But you play it by ear, uh, trade and own, own things only that you are well aware of and that you know and that you want to own. You know, things like Nike, big names, Disney, those type of things. So. Um, another interesting thing is, is as far as the U.S. map goes for hotspots, um, this virus is pretty legit. Um, they're going to likely be announcing that everybody should be walking around wearing face masks. I don't think it's a bad idea. I don't think it's a paranoid thing. Um, it, it's always just a better safe than sorry situation. So Arizona, I believe, is the lowest where I'm at, the lowest per capita being tested uh, in the country. So I think Arizona's probably got a lot more than we think. I don't know if the weather helps. It just started hitting, you know, high 80s today. So that's one thing to be aware of. Still cold up in the New Jersey, New York area, but the, the, the population density of New York, LA, Seattle, everybody's pretty close to each other, especially New York. So I'm not surprised that New York became as hot spot as it did as soon as they got their first case. Um, and I don't really know of anywhere else as far as in the country that's going to get worse than that. I don't think Louisiana will. Um, a lot of media says it is, but it, 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 it's going to be so concentrated in New York that we're going to learn a lot very fast as far as uh, what's going on there. So just got to be aware of that. Uh, testing, I think, matters. Uh, I want to predict and say that within six months, uh, we're past this. Um, and it's just going to be another bug that we live with. Um, you know, that's my, my hope. Um, so kind of be aware of that. One of the topics that somebody mentioned that I asked for on Twitter was to talk about the toilet paper shortage. So, um, you know, I, I 
foresaw a few things as far as in early February, and once the CDC said to you know, hunker in place, I went to Costco pretty early before that first mad rush of the weekend. I got toilet paper, I got water, all that stuff. Our local Safeway is still out of toilet paper and paper towels. Um, I know some other friends that are in town that, that have found some stores that they're in, but it, it blows me away that it's been almost over a month uh, and we still don't have toilet paper at our, our Safeway. Uh, I'm pretty sure that when it gets put out, it's gone within, you know, the first day because everybody sees that the shelf is empty. So when the shelf is there and, and stocked, they're, <laughs> they're going to grab two or three rolls of toilet paper so they don't have to worry about it for another month. Um, the people that bought multiple years and, and crates worth that Costco, that's just kind of crazy to me. Uh, but I guess, you know, when you're doing things that you don't normally do, you, you do it as crazy as you can think of. So... Uh, ideally and hopefully toilet paper just isn't a, a thing anymore. There's some amazing memes out there as far as uh, toilet paper stuff. So uh, at least if you're if you're in a bad mood, just you need to find on the internet some, some good toilet paper memes. So uh, one of the other things that I'm going to mention is Airbnb. It's an interesting situation. All I've really read about is uh, people that are like super hosts on Airbnb have these houses, they own 10, 20, 30 houses. And if you're a person that put yourself in that situation and you're not, you know, adequately liquid for at least maybe three months of no renters, and that's something that you should probably be aware of that when you get into a situation of, oh, I'm gonna, you know, buy 20 houses, you should probably think in the, the, the back of your mind, what happens if I don't get hosts for a month? Um, do I have the cash to keep these houses and pay these mortgages? So I keep reading all these tweets and these these kind of uh, under the breath reports of you know people just not paying their mortgages on these houses and they're going to let them blow up. Um, and everybody's really concerned now about the housing market, which is a legitimate concern because with housing uh, getting crushed. I just see rents dropping and I've thought for years um, that rent is way too high. You know, you got some people that are paying, you know, 2000 to 2500 a month in the central, you know, Scottsdale area in Phoenix here for a studio. Uh, and you could buy a house, a legitimately big house, 20 miles away, you might have to drive another 10 minutes to work for the same price. And then you own the house. So uh, it's one of those things that, uh, in the long run, I think more people should own houses instead of be renting. You're, you're throwing money into a, a, a fire pit. So it'll be interesting to see how this Airbnb situation plays out. Um, I just hope in the long run it gets more people into equity and in they're buying a house and, and stopping people from renting. Um, all I've seen lately is rentals just popping up everywhere. So uh, next thing is the book that I'm currently reading. I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the YouTube description of this one as well. Uh, I think you can get it on Audible for free. Uh, I like to actually have the paper books, and it's The Panic of 1907. I'm currently halfway through it. It's a pretty interesting uh, book as far as when there's no Fed and what happened to the markets. Um, you know, like I said, only halfway through it. So the situation that arose in that period was you don't have a big safety net. The market was, it was like the crypto market. So imagine uh, people withdrawing like Bitcoin constantly and there's nobody there to say, whoa, wait, we're gonna provide liquidity. It wasn't there. People were running on banks, uh, getting cash out of banks. Banks didn't have any money to supply it. Um, and it, it's really interesting as far as the story that uh, uh, JP Morgan does to stem the tide of that 1907 uh, panic and everything that leads out of it. So uh, it'll be a fun one to finish. Um, I definitely recommend it. Uh, I love reading books uh, when I get the time. So. Last but not least, everybody knows, if you don't know, uh, I am a Brave browser fan because I hate Chrome. And they basically strip out everything and they got flip-flops in today in their store. I bought them and that's about it. So I'll talk to you guys next time.